Jackson Jeffco to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, fresh off signing a new contract, joins us on WST. Jackson, how are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Finished the workout this morning. Now back home relaxing. Off-season grind. Uh, how uh, have you enjoyed the last couple months? It's been good. It's been good. I took about a month off. Um, enjoyed some traveling around the States. Just going to see family in Dallas, Atlanta. And... Um, it's been good. It's been nice and relaxing. It, it, it was nice to be able to see family for Christmas, see family for New Year's. It, it, I love seeing family and I love family time. So it was great. I have to ask you, I mean, uh, we know the heartbreaker that uh, was the loss in the Grey Cup after winning a couple. Uh, how long did it take you to get over that one? And uh, have you watched it? Uh, I've watched it a couple times. Uh, you got to watch it. You got to embrace it. You got to. Sometimes you got to deal with the the tough things. Uh, so I watched it, saw what I could have done better, uh, analyzed my whole season. Going to get back to watching just the season on film again of myself, and I do that normally in the off season. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. It's the past. So I'm I'm, I'm excited to move on and uh, and get things started for 2023. After the, how long is the is the morning period between the end of the game and actually getting back in the tape and watching it with a focus on um, making yourself better? I'll be honest. I think I watched the game within a week of the game of the loss uh, because I really wanted to see what was up, like what happened. Um, and then I watched it again when I got home, back to Austin, and. I just saw more and more and more things of like what we could have done better, how we could have executed better, and knowing that in the in the future that we'll we'll improve on that. Well, I mean, listen, two very good teams playing in a championship game. I mean, we've seen on the positive side the very narrow margin between winning and losing. Uh, and I imagine that's going to be a big part of the message of this football team going into next season. Congratulations on a new contract. We uh, we had Kyle Walters on, and we were sort of pressing him a little bit, and he kind of told us, don't worry. And a couple days later, we heard the deal was announced. Um, the unfinished business tour of getting the band packed together seems to already be starting for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Take us through the uh, decision to come back and uh, how that all came together. Yeah, uh, I... There's no better place to be at the moment for me. Uh, things just just fit. They fit into place right. Um, I wanted to come back and at least get another year in with Winnipeg and for, see what we could do. See how we could we could make some things shake. And I don't know. Every year is different. Every year is. Um, I take it I take it upon myself to be the best that I can be. And so again, evaluating my season from last year, not being able to stay on the field the way I want it to. I um I have some high expectations for myself. Well, and certainly I mean the team has uh, set the bar so high um that I'm sure when you're off season conversations there's a real focus on uh, coming back and um having a similarly great season, but just ending it on a winning note as opposed to the way the last great cup. Do you talk to a lot of your teammates uh, over the course of the, uh, the off season? And uh, what's the feeling amongst the bombers about uh, that level of excitement to come back and uh, give another run at a championship? Yeah, I, I honestly, I just got off the, off the phone with Willie before that I was on the phone with a uh, big hill. Uh, yeah. We, we all chat together uh, and talk and shoot. I had a, uh, Tanner uh, Gaskill, Kyle Walter on the phone. Um, uh, my boy, Baby Goat, that Brendan O'Leary Orange. Uh, I was that we were all just talking, but yeah, we're we're all excited to get back to work, get back to playing together, get, being our best as individuals, but being our best as a group as well. I think that we are a group that enjoys playing with each other, and it's been fun. I mean, this is a team that obviously loves each other and has had so much great success that um, I think everyone's looking forward to seeing the team come back with a bit of a chip on its shoulder looking to do it again. Now, you mentioned Willie and Biggie. I, both of them are here in Winnipeg right now. If you uh, didn't think about coming back, it's only about minus 25 right now, Jackson. It's, uh, it's maybe, Although you guys got some snow down in Texas, didn't you? We did. We did. Um, to be honest, 
I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cold weather. I play well in the cold weather in November and I've done it in December, but, uh, I like my, uh, winters down South in January and February. Most definitely. Um, I also like the, the, the ability to get out on the field. I can still get on the field and do work here. Uh, because even though we've had snow, we've had cold weather, it's not that cold. I mean, it's just we don't have the the infrastructure and equipment to deal with the icy roads, to deal with snow on the on the roads. And so that's why a lot of times people don't understand why Texans make a big deal. It's because if you think about it, when Winnipeg gets their first snow, there's a lot of accidents. Why? Because the roads weren't plowed. They weren't taken care of. And that's just kind of what it is here. Well, I can tell you from firsthand experience getting to uh, Dallas the Sunday night of Super Bowl week in 2011, having a big storm, and the city was basically paralyzed for the first four days we were there. Nobody left the hotel or the media center um, because, yeah, they just simply, simply didn't have it. As far as preparing for the upcoming season, you mentioned you took a little bit of time off, do a little bit of traveling. At this point in your career, what what is off season training like for you, Jackson? Is it um, just a lot of time in the weight room? Is it uh, is it cardio? Um, and how has it changed over the course of your career? Yeah, uh, when I first started out, uh, it was a lot of heavy weight, weight room, get big. Not as much running, not as much, um, not not as much running, or and then field work. So heavy lifting field work it's become way more strategic as far as one play into my strengths as a football player uh but two being smart with my age i don't need to overtrain. and there's a i remember one of my coaches was talking to ryan kerrigan when i was in washington and he was like you're getting to an age where you can actually overtrain." and he was telling him don't overtrain. work hard do what you do but don't overtrain." And I took that to heart. I made sure that I didn't overtrain and try to do too much because I know my personality. Like I'll be in the weight room every day. I'll be on the field every day if I have if I can. Like, but that's why I have a good trainer. He 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 dials me in, keeps me from going too hard or doing too much. And we're really intentional about the mobility work we do, the speed training we do. The, the uh, acceleration, the explosion work, the physicality work that we do. Uh, so we're trying to get all, all bases of my game, all bases of playing football, everything that we, we can within training sessions. Jackson Jeffcoat of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers joining us from Austin, Texas in the offseason here on Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Um, what's the rest of the offseason look like for you? Just mainly sticking around Austin and training? You got any holidays planned? And uh, how soon will you get back up here to Winnipeg with the fellows and get ready to try to uh, get that season started? I think I'm going to be hanging tight here in Austin for the most part. Maybe a weekend trip here and there, uh, but haven't had anything planned at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I'm really getting it in uh, and making sure I'm on top of everything. Like I said, like last year wasn't up to my standards. I didn't wasn't able to stay on the field like I wanted to. Like there were injuries that I feel like I could have prevented, maybe from not doing too much or doing other things. So I'm gonna make sure that I dial in on that. And um, I think I'll be back in May beginning of May, so maybe two weeks before training camp, a week before training camp. Yeah. I haven't decided yet. But normally I drive. I drive up to Winnipeg. So it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to do that again or not or figure out an easier way to get up there with my truck. Yeah, you know, well, the easier way is to fly it and have somebody drive it for you. That uh, basically, I think, is the option. Any that volunteers, nice. you, know, you know where to go. Jackson Jeffcoat's with us. Um, Jackson, you know, I remember in our conversations before, you're a guy that doesn't watch a ton of football outside of, um, you know, when you're playing and obviously tape and whatnot. Certainly when I'm talking about, like, NFL, four-down football. But you did mention you did catch a little bit of the uh, AFC Championship game and, just as a guy that plays in the trenches on the line, I'm interested in uh, what you thought of Chris Jones and the Chiefs' defense and how impactful they were in uh, getting Kansas City over the hump and back to the big game. Well, it was exciting to watch just seeing those guys get to 
Joe Burrow, who they who his teammates set him up. It wasn't right. They they set him up for failure. Talking about Burrowhead and all that. I again, I never understood why people do that. Uh, I know you want to pump up your guy, but don't try to make your guy. You're unless you're blocking for that guy. Don't make the guy that's gonna trying to throw the ball and gonna get hit job harder by by talking crap. Um, because he dealt with it, he felt it for sure. So it's always fun to watch that. Whenever I watch pro football, any other pro football other than the CFL, actually, same. I I. I, I'm studying it. So when I'm watching the CFL, I'm studying. I'm trying to learn. I'm not watching it for entertainment purposes. I'm trying to learn different things, see different tendencies of teams and whatnot, and, and I get to see it live. So the same thing happens in the NFL, and that's why I don't try to watch it as much because it's not fun for me. It's work for me. Or everybody else is just sitting there enjoying it, having a good time. Oh, that was nice. You see that? And so I'd rather do other things like throw a line in the water uh, or jump in some cold water like I've been doing every uh, Saturday. Uh, how are your dogs? They're doing good. Actually, at the moment, while we're talking, they're they're playing. So uh, I figured they were uh, they were very popular additions on your last visit here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. We knew they'd be uh, they'd be kicking around. Um, you can throw them in the truck and uh, make that trip up back here and get started on uh, what will hopefully be another championship season for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Jackson, thanks so much for doing this. Have a great rest of the off season, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again maybe uh, a little later on or closer to the beginning of training camp and. Uh, Listen, it's cold outside right now, but cannot wait to get back to IG Field and see you guys uh, start getting after a little unfinished business uh, next season in blue and gold. Oh, yeah, we're going to heat it up. We're going to heat it up for sure. So everybody be ready. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. Whenever you get a chance, hit me up. I'll get on again. 